and welcome to another story time here at the Lawrence at Home. My name is Teacher Bia and I'm going to be your storyteller for today. And today we are continuing our series called Stories in Steam where we tell the stories of different scientists. But before we get started with our story for the day, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video so you never miss another science video from us. So today, we're going to be telling the story of an Egyptian scientist called Samira Musa that I'm very excited to share with you. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so here is our scientist for today. Her name is Samira Musa, and she was a nuclear scientist who wanted to use atomic energy for good. And we're about to learn a little more about what that means. So Samira Musa was born in 1917 on Sambo village on the Garbia Governorate in Egypt. So here is part of the map of the world that you can see the African continent and Egypt is right here on the northeast part of the continent. And she was born in the Garbia Governorate that is shown right here on this picture in red. So it's a small governorate in the north part of Egypt. When she was still young, her mother unfortunately lost her life to cancer. Later, this would inspire Samira to contribute to the development of new, innovative, and accessible treatments to this disease. So now you can imagine what it must have feel like for Samira to lose her mom when she was still young. It was probably something very hard for her to live through. But she still had her dad, so Musa and her father moved to Cairo, the capital of Egypt, and he supported her in continuing her education. She got very good grades and was especially talented and interested in science subjects. So she decided to join the sciences department at Cairo University studying radiology. Later, Samira would become the first woman to ever teach at Cairo University. After her studies in radiology, she continued her education, entering a PhD program focused on nuclear science. So a PhD program is something people can pursue after getting a bachelor's degree in college, and she decided to pursue a program focused on nuclear science. She was very passionate about using nuclear science for peaceful means and participating in groundbreaking research on how radiation can be used to identify cancer cells. You might remember in the beginning of our story, we talked about how Samira's mom lost her life to cancer. So Samira dedicated herself to study more about this disease, specifically how we can use uh, radiation to treat and identify cancer cells. Now, you might be thinking, what is nuclear science? Well, let's talk about that for a moment. Do you recognize this image that is shown on this picture over here? Hmm. Have you ever seen this image before? Does it remind you of something? Hmm, think about it for a moment. And if you're watching this video with someone, maybe share your ideas with them. If you need some more time to think, pause the video now. But I'm gonna tell you that this picture shows an atom. And atoms are what make up matter. And matter is anything that has weight and occupies space. For example, my shirt, this door, or even the air are made of matter. And matter is made up of atoms. And atoms have two different regions. On the center in red is the nucleus of the atom. And around the nucleus, there is an orbit of electrons that are moving around the nucleus. So nuclear science deals with changes that happen in the nucleus. And those reactions are much more energetic than the reactions that deal with changes on the outside part, on the electron part. Now that we know what nuclear science is, let's get back to Samira's story. She finished her PhD in England, and then she became the first woman to receive a PhD in atomic radiation. So she was a pioneer for women in her field. She contributed to advancing X-ray technology, making it cheaper and safer. So maybe you know somebody, or maybe you yourself has had an X-ray before. An X-ray is sort of like a picture that doctors can take to see what's happening on the inside of our bodies. Over here, I have a few pictures of X-rays, and maybe you can guess, what parts of the body do you think are shown in these pictures? Hmm? Well, up here, I see five digits, and this is an X-ray picture of a hand. 
on this picture over here, we can see two sides that are pretty similar and some ridges along them. Do you have any idea what part of the body that is? Hmm. Well, that picture is showing the thorax, so the chest area of somebody with their lungs and heart. And lastly, over here, I can see a round shape. And over here, something's sticking out. Well, these over here are actually teeth. And this picture over here is an x-ray picture of a head. Samira really contributed to x-ray technology when x-ray was still very new. She really contributed to making this kind of technology more accessible and cheaper for those that needed to use it. She has a very famous quote that says, I'll make nuclear treatments as available and as cheap as aspirin. She knew that nuclear energy and nuclear science had a huge potential of helping people that were sick like her mother. And she wanted to make these kinds of treatment, treatment effective and available for all. And that was her dream. And looking toward that goal, she developed an equation that allows scientists to split atoms of cheap metals like copper to access their nuclear energy. So she worked toward making nuclear energy more accessible and less expensive. However, sadly, some of her discoveries were used in nuclear warfare. Well, you may have heard of nuclear energy in this way before, because nuclear power is also used by some countries to make weapons and atomic bombs that are very destructive. However, Samira was committed to using atomic energy only for peaceful purposes, and this prompted her to set up the first Atomic Energy for Peace conference, where scientists from all over the world gather to make recommendations for protection against nuclear hazards. So when her findings that she was studying in order to advance treatments in medicine were being used for war purposes, she took action and she put together a conference where scientists could get together and discuss the risks and establish some guidelines about the use of nuclear energy. Because of her outstanding work on this field, she received a scholarship and was invited to visit nuclear research facilities in the United States. She was offered American citizenship to remain in the country and continue her work in the U.S., but she refused, saying that her country, that's Egypt, awaited her return. So she refused to stay in the United States, and she wanted to return to her home and continue her work in Egypt. So not long after she refused to stay in the United States, while she was still on that same trip, on August 5th of 1952, on her way to a dinner invitation, the car Samira was in swerved and plummeted off a cliff, and she died at the age of 35. She was still very young. The driver of that car was able to jump out of the vehicle and was never found. And although it has never been proven, it is suspected that her death was not an accident. There's actually suspicion that someone is responsible for the death of this brilliant scientist. Since she was working on a very new field that had so many connections to warfare, it's possible that someone did not want her to keep working on the technology she was working for her country of origin. Throughout her life, Samira had to overcome a lot of adversity. She lost her mom at a young age, and she was one of the first women to enter a very new field. She was able to overcome some of those obstacles and contribute greatly to science. Thanks to Samira's work, medicine was able to advance and cancer treatments and x-rays became more available to others. Now it is our responsibility to remember her, tell her story, and continue her work. So today, we got to meet a new scientist called Samira Musa that really did a lot of work in order to ensure that nuclear energy was used for good. She was motivated to make radiation treatments accessible and cheap for all. Unfortunately, she died at the age of 35 before she could accomplish this goal. But many scientists after her have continued to improve this field and continue to fight for nuclear energy to be used solely for good and not for war. Well, my friends,
Thank you so much for joining me for today's story. Once again, I want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and like this video if you want to see more science videos from us. We'll be back here this Friday with another story in STEAM and learn about another scientist. Thank you so much for joining me. Once again, my name is Teacher Bia, and I hope to see you next time here at the Lawrence at Home. Bye-bye.